Welcome, everyone. We are live with the Martial Arts Experience. It is Thursday, December 29th. I hope everybody had a great holiday. For those of you that celebrate Christmas, I do celebrate, and it, it was a great time for my family. Um, both of my boys were home from college, so I was obviously a proud papa. But I got to tell you, I was excited for today's show. Uh, we have a legend, um, an amazing actor, amazing gentleman. Uh, he, he's just a man. I'm going to let everybody know. So I'm not going to waste any further time. I'm bringing him in right now, his first time ever, and this is Mr. Harrison Page. How you doing, sir? I'm doing just great, man. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too, sir. I really appreciate you taking time over the holiday. Uh, you you are the, the special guest of the martial arts experience before we go into the new year. This is a historic, right. historic interview. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Harrison, where are you? If you don't mind telling the viewers, where are you based out of? What state are you based out of? Oh, I'm out, I'm out of California. Yeah, okay. I'm in, you know, the Hollywood area. Yeah. Ah, okay. Okay. Fantastic. Um, how was your holiday? Did you have a good holiday? I had a great holiday, man. I spent it with somebody that you know. I spent it with Sheldon Leditch, man, who was the director. Ah. Of uh, he and his family. He has a brood of girls that <laughs> that wow. are strong girls too really you know uh we had sheldon a couple episodes ago and um mm -hmm. he's a great guy obviously he put us in connection so you know he he's, he's just a great man great director uh you know great career but yeah, yeah. he's he's an awesome guy so yeah, yeah now harrison I, uh real fast you didn't do like uh you know most americans did you did you uh overindulge over the holiday and eat a lot of goodies or, or were you you know conscious and you only had uh green beans and water <laughs> i always overindulge uh, during thanksgiving it's my favorite uh holiday of the year uh, completely because i i have good memories of thanksgiving and i love 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 to eat because i was around ladies who cooked very well they taught me gotcha okay mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. So Harrison, let's jump right into your career. So obviously, you know, this is a martial arts show, uh, right. but you have been, you know, a, a master of your craft for decades. Um, mm -hmm. How did you first get your first start, uh, and, you know, to get the acting bug? Well, you know what? I got the bug when I was a kid, eight years old. Uh, and, and my mother is responsible for that because uh, like mother, she was, uh, you know, uh, she was tough on me, and and uh, and her favorite thing to say to me is, "Boy, you ain't gonna mount to nothing." <laughs> and, uh, uh, and 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 uh, somehow or another, that must have resonated with me because uh, later on, uh, when I was in high school, I got into the senior senior play, and uh, somehow I got really hooked right there. Now I didn't know that her words meant anything to me, but I think I spent my younger life, a younger life, trying to trying to uh, tell her or inform her that I was going to amount to something. Right, so, right. so, you know, um, that was my first uh, first thing. The high school thing was was the first time I ever been on a stage. Mm. And uh, it, it was uh, it was quite an experience for me. And then after that, I went into the military. I was a I sang in a in a doo -op group. Uh, <laughs> I got pleasure. I got. Yeah, I, I got pleasure out of that because the audiences were a bunch of military guys, and they laughed and hooted and enjoyed it. And then I said, "Well, wow, this is this is this feels good." And then I came to Hollywood, and uh, wow. you know, I didn't get a job for about four years. But somebody told me said four years is a very short time to start your uh, your professional career as an actor because most people it's like ten years. Right. Uh, in four years, I had a job, man. I had a little wow. piece and had a, a little part actually in a film that a guy by the name of Rush, Russ Meyer produced. He was a, split, a skin flick uh, director who got okay. himself a free picture deal after I worked with him. Yeah. Harrison, explain to the viewers, you know, uh, those that don't know the terms, what, what would you say is a skin flick? Skin flick is when there's a partial nudity. Mostly, okay. you know, mostly it's ladies, young ladies with ample breasts gotcha uh, gotcha I, yeah and this guy loved all, all the ample breasts is that you know so that's what we did but i had a part in one of his movies that was a turning point for him i played a very oh. serious guy who was trying to um 
you know, dodge the draft. And we were in Canada and we got into some real dramatic stuff there. And it, wow. it helped him. Helped him. Yeah. Wow. So after after you got involved with that, you know, mm -hmm. how did you, you know, where where did that take your career next? Well, after the after that thing, that, that film was called Vixen. And the next movie that Russ Meyer did in that three picture deal was a thing called Beyond the Valley of the Dolls. Mm. Uh, it was supposed to be a sequel to Valley of the Dolls, but it became something else. And uh, he had, uh, you know, a good part for me in that. And uh, we went on from there, man. I mean, everything after that, I mean, I went off. I, I went, man, you know. <laughs> I went from that to uh, doing a guest shot on Bonanza, Mannix. Now, there are people out there probably won't remember these shows, especially if they're under 100. No, under say 50. <laughs> he they said 100. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, not 100 yet. I got a little ways to go. Uh, Harrison, and, I uh, found I found a picture of this young guy here. Um, oh, did you? Let's see. Let's see. Is that what what era oh. what era was this? Oh, that was that was in the 70s. Okay. And that was a, I believe that show was Room 227. Uh, that's that's a show that um, was a sitcom, and uh, it featured some ladies uh, that did great in the industry after that. So yeah, no, that that was that. <laughs> I'm I'm about that age. I'm about thirty something there. Wow. Sorry, yeah, you don't, don't age. Know you look the same, Harrison. You look the same. Oh. Uh, no, I don't, man. That's that guy there looks like a baby, and also, also he's uh, he's got this big hair and stuff. And so <laughs> I don't even recognize that guy. Uh, you can say I, I I look the same. That's great. I like that. I think I, I think you've aged well. You 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 have definitely aged well, sir. Thank you, thank you, my friend. Thank you. Now you're gonna laugh. I used to follow this sitcom myself, and uh, I would have put the poster up for a show. And I like to know how did you get involved with Sledgehammer. Oh man, that's a that's a long story. Um, Sledgehammer was unique, as you well know. Mm -hmm. uh, and what I did is, I think I remember that I went to read for it, audition for it. Uh, I believe it was at a studio in in our town called Culver City, uh, and I just knew that this person had to be someone who was so frustrated with the person that he was dealing with that he went off this earth. Uh, and uh, I just went in the room, man, and just took over. You know, I just I threw things. I, I, I yelled a lot and it, it worked out. And there was a lot of actors up for that part too. So wow. I had a great time with that show. Yeah, it was, it was actually, actually, it was very therapeutic. You know, wow. I mean, I know you saw the show. You saw the show, right? Yeah. Did, yeah. So, uh, you know, you you if you saw the show, you saw Captain Trunk uh, being exasperated most of the time, yelling. Uh, I mean, I got a lot of frustrations out on that show. Man. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I, well, uh, now, now, Harrison, as as we spoke before, I said that sometimes yeah. we get some quick shout outs to some wonderful right. people yeah. that are viewers. Uh, so a very yeah. good friend of mine. He's actually a, um, a great man as well. Martial artist. He's an actor as mm -hmm. well, based out of uh, L.A. Uh, his name okay. is William Christopher Ford. Uh, if you mm -hmm. could just say a quick hello to William. Hey, William, how you doing? William was part of the Karate Kid franchise. He was in Karate Kid 3, and then he has a show uh, on um, Tubi and Amazon called 52 Masters. So it's okay. a really okay. cool program. Um, okay. And then we have one of our faithful listeners from New Jersey. Uh, his name is mm -hmm. Ivan Kazemi. Ivan, if you could just say a quick uh, hello to Ivan for tuning in. Hey, Ivan, thank you for tuning in, man. Wish I could see your face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll have we'll have some guys that are tuned in, but these guys are William's a great friend, Ivan's a great guy. Uh, they always support, yeah. but like I said, William's right in uh, right outside Torrance, California. So he's uh, you know, he, he's a California guy like you. 
Oh, okay, okay, yeah. He's, apparently, he's, apparently, Harrison, you got to be yeah. if you're going to be a movie star, you got to be in L.A. Apparently, yeah. <laughs> this is you know the old days. Everybody had to be in New York. Now it's 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 Hollywood or bust, man. It's yeah. Crazy, 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 crazy. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so let's talk about after the role of Sledgehammer in the sitcom and and how popular it was. You know, where where did your career then kind of go? Because you you also did some. You know, you did. Uh, didn't you do some theater as well? I did do a couple of theater things. Uh, I did a. There's a place called the Pasadena Playhouse that we have here. As a matter of fact, I think Dustin Hoffman and and Gene Hackman are alumni. Uh, at uh, Pasadena, uh, and I did a couple plays there. I did some local stuff in in, in Hollywood, uh, and I love the stage. And I'm a member of a, of a place called the Actors Studio. I don't know if you ever heard that. Some of you guys may have, may not, but it's been around for a long, long, long time. And uh, there are people like you know Marlon Brando and uh, Al Pacino and Bob De Niro and Ellen Burstyn. Anyway, I don't want to keep naming Rod Steiger. Who are members of that? I believe incredible group of people of actors, and I was a member there. I'm still a member. You you become a member there, you're a member for life. So I, I did a lot of stage work there. That we did, uh, uh, you know, st plays and stuff written by by members. You know, they were, mm. you know, yeah, yeah. We did a lot of. I did a lot of stage work. There a lot. I learned a lot. Uh, I fell on my butt a lot, but it was it was good for me. <laughs> So, so judging, so I'm going to give you three scenarios. What, what's right. your favorite? Movie, theater, or sitcom? I think movies. Yeah. And the reason, you know, the reason for that is that, uh, you know, there's a different approach to movies. I'm, some, I'm somebody who uh, I like to, to improvise. Uh, I like to take my time when I'm, I'm learning my part. I like to prepare correctly. And in movies, you get that time. And you also, you get rehearsal. In, in television, there's not a lot of rehearsal. Uh, you've got to be uh, ready right away. Uh, and it takes a lot out of you. Now, don't, don't get me wrong. It's not like it's, it's a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. I was, most of my work has been on television. But uh, again, you know, it's not my favorite because I would rather have that time and I'd rather improvise, some people call it ad-libbing. And I don't know if you talk to Sheldon about Lionheart, but most of that, about 80% of that is is so-called ad-libbing. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Now yeah. now I have a question, but you know, before we jump into Lionheart, um, mm -hmm. did you ever study martial arts? Did you have anything to do with combat or anything like that? Well, I can only say that I was in the Air Force for four years, and we did have training uh, but it wasn't martial arts it was self-defense you know it was with weapons uh there was some a small amount of martial arts in terms of how to get a person down and hold them there you know but but martial arts is so much more than what we were doing right 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 so yeah. how did you, you you mentioned sheldon and, and again before we jump into lion art you know, talk about yeah. your relationship. How did you first meet Sheldon? And because uh, you met him before Lionheart, I remember you mentioned to me uh, when we were mm -hmm. kind of talking off screen. Um, you know, yeah. talk about your relationship, how you met him, and you know, and then what brought you, you know, to to move on. Yeah, yeah, he and I met in, uh, in a place that was a it was a um, it was a, a club restaurant type place that was uh, Western type. Uh, type club where they did line dancing. And I had a friend whose name was Freeman King. He was a comedian. And he and I were hanging out there, you know, and I, I owned horses at that particular time. So I was, oh, wow. I had the whole, yeah, whole Western, Western thing going. Um, but, but it was a country Western place. And, and, and for some reason or another, Sheldon was there. I don't know why, maybe he was hanging out with Freeman, I don't know. But Freeman introduced us and um, and at, after that evening, I never saw, uh, I never saw uh, Sheldon again uh, for years. Now Sheldon is the one who, actually, he reminded me 
of it because I had forgotten it. Uh, but it was after we started doing doing Lionheart. But the next time I saw him, I was in to to talk about Lionheart and to read and audition. Wow, wow. Now, now, yeah. now, you you did another project. Was it before Lionheart or after the other uh, TV show, Quantum Leap? Quantum Leap. Oh yeah, Quantum Leap was I did after Lionheart. Uh, I had a great time doing that thing too because I had a really terrific partner, nice lady. Uh, Tammy Townsend, you may have heard of her. She's all over the TV set now and in film. She's such a pretty lady and so smart, so talented. And she played my daughter. And uh, I think the, the episode was, I was a father and I was I was a minister. And she, was, she wanted to venture out into doing rhythm and blues. And I wanted her in the church. And, uh, you know, I berated her about that. And we had a conflict about that. And she left the house. So I had to go look for her. And at the end of that film, even as I think of it today, it moves me almost to tears because if you saw that episode, uh, you would understand it. So that episode was so good that I was nominated for an Emmy. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and having that is just an episode, right? Because some people go their whole career and they're waiting for that mm -hmm. one role to get Emmy yeah. nominated. You got it in yeah. one specific role in an episode. Right, right, right. That was wow. one wrong episode. And the only way, I, this story, I tell people this, they say, I can't believe it. Uh, the, the, I was nominated and would have taken home the Emmy. But for some reason or another, the Television Academy members, who uh, peer group people, who are other actors, decided that they were going to lump guest, job, guest actors into the same category as, as the regulars. Mm. So in other words, you, you know, when I say regular, I'm talking about somebody's regular on a television series uh, goes one show after another, right? Straight through right. to yep. the end of the year, right? right? They are the stars of the TV show. Uh, and I have one guest show, one, sh one show. Uh, and I think from what I heard, had it not been for that big change they made, because uh, Bruce Willis was up for it that year, oh, Sam wow. Waterston for it that year uh and those guys were all regulars on on, on running television shows and right. i had just that one one shot man and if they had not done that and i'm, I'm still ups <laughs> a little upset with them for that. <laughs> uh, uh, if they had not done that i would i would have taken home the emmy and i'd be showing it to you right now right in front of um, you know what harrison my apologies because we should have titled the episode emmy nominated Harrison Payne, my fault, sir. My fault. No, no, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I did not know that. So did they just change it that year or had been a couple years that they, they lumped that together like that? One year. That one year. And myself and a few other people who were not too happy about that joined uh, the, the peer group, the uh, uh, Television Academy peer group so that we could make a big fuss about it. And that's what we did. And they, right, the next right. year, they, they changed it. Wow. But that, yeah. did, that but they changed it afterwards. That doesn't help you. No, that doesn't help me at all. <laughs> and I haven't <laughs> been nominated since. <laughs> oh, man. Well, you know what? We're going we're gonna to have to make this right. So I always do a ticker. So let everybody know, okay. you know, somebody, you know, tunes in so they know what episode. And um, let's see. We're going to do season three, episode nine, Emmy nominated Harrison Page. I'm, this is going to run across the screen the rest of the interview. Oh, That's okay. Gonna okay. Okay. <laughs> Good for you. You're all over this thing, man. Thank you. <laughs> so, Harrison, I want to talk because obviously, you know, we're, you know, we have a lot of martial arts, I have a lot of viewers, and um, we did get a great response mm -hmm. when we announced uh, mm -hmm. you were coming on, as well as we had Sheldon on a couple episodes. Um, um, we're also going to be going after me, yeah. Mr. Kesey as well. Uh, he, hopefully he comes on to the show in the next couple of weeks, but okay. you know, let's talk about Lionheart. You know, this is such a, a classic movie okay. for a lot of martial artists and, you know, for a lot of people. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you had an amazing character, Joshua, you know, goes down yeah. as, I, I don't even know the historic number two guy, you know what I mean? Like he was a great role. Yeah. Tell yeah. us about the process. 
How'd you get yeah. casted? You know, what got you involved with the film? Okay. Um, I just, I went in to meet with the producers uh, one day. And what I did was, which is what I, actors do, I, at least I do, uh, I tried to, the part, what was called for in the part was a guy was a, was a hustler in the, and, a, and, and, and a homeless guy. All right. Uh, and I, I, I tried my best to look as close to possible as possible to whatever that character was. And uh, I put on this old raincoat, kind of like, kind of like Columbo raincoat. I had some things that had holes in the fingers that looked like, you know, homeless people. And right. uh, I, I did something that I had never done before. Right outside my house, uh, I stuck, as I was on the way to go there, I stuck my hands in the dirt and made sure my fingernails were dirty. Wow. That feeling of my fingernails dirty kind of helped me realize that uh, this is something that a homeless person would have to deal with. Dirty fingernails, of course, of course. So I, I felt dirty, man, and dingy when I went in. Uh, and I went in also, and by the way, there's cat shit on the, <laughs> the <laughs> my finger. Anyway, I, I'm not, you, you, can, you can cut that out if you like. Um, anyway, so I, I went in for the audition and I, I have this thing, what, whatever it is that, that takes me where I need to go for playing a part, I'll, I'll do it. And I decided that instead of just sitting there with everybody else, because there were guys in the in the outer office there, uh, you know, reading and so on, preparing themselves. Uh, and I decided that I was going to lay on the floor. So I laid on the floor and pretty much kind of went to sleep as if I was outside trying wow. to sleep with traffic and noises. And, and, I, and it helped a lot. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying this is something that everybody should, should do. I'm just saying, for me, right. I try myself to get as close to the characters as I can. So I'm laying on the floor there. And uh, and finally, I think it was either it was Sheldon or either um, the casting person who was Jim Tarzia. It may have been Jim Tarzia. Uh, came out and said, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Harrison. Yes. <laughs> Are you asleep? You know. And uh, I, I, I got up and I went in. It's not easy. It's very difficult. People, I went into that office and there was a few other people. I think I remember going to the back of the room. They had cameras and stuff on them. And I just went. I went, man, I had this speech with, with uh, Jean-Claude about uh, losing the fight, about blowing, about you know taking a dive or whatever you call it. And I said, you got to do this, man, lay down because, you know, uh, they, they've got a killer out there. You're going to have to fight. So lay down and let's meet. He right. said, no. He said, oh, I'm going to do that. And they didn't start yelling at him. I mean, you know, I mean, I went, I don't want to do that here, but uh, I went off and said, you know, you're going to get killed out there. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, so that's, that's how I prepared for it. And they, they gave me the part, man. Um, wow. Convinced them. Don't, don't... <laughs> wow. Now, no, now yeah, Harrison. That's what I did, man. Harrison, yeah. you know, um, yeah. it was that, that was the side, that, yeah. that specific side that you had to read was literally that iconic part at the, at the end of the movie. Ha, yeah. Pretty much near the end of the movie. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. Did you so, say something? Yeah. Say it again. No, go ahead. Oh, no, no. So, uh, I mean, go that's, ahead. that's I'll crazy see. that that was the part because then you had already kind of, you know, you had already embraced that. And then obviously you had to read it in the full script later on. Mm -hmm. Yes, I did. I did. And I, I read it. I read it through myself, but I had already memorized it. So I just threw the script over on the side and uh, and and uh, and did it all kind of different ways and did a little improvisation there, too.
Wow. So, 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 you know, what all yeah. the viewers yeah. I think want to know, Harrison, is you know, obviously the character of, of Joshua was was mm -hmm. awesome, is iconic, and and I want to dive into that. But I think a lot of people, you know, mm -hmm. what was it like for you, you know, to work with with Jean Claude? Did you guys mm -hmm. have good rapport from the beginning? You know, was it tough working with him throughout the mm -hmm. movie? You know, because you guys did have some good synergy, you know, at certain parts. But you know, what 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 was it? What was it like working yeah. with him at that time? I didn't know Jean Claude at that time. Uh, I, I I'd heard about him, but I I had not seen any of his films. Uh, and he, he's a very stoic person. Uh, stoic and and uh, tough and dangerous. And I I I didn't realize how much. Uh, I needed that uh, from him because, you know, I wanted to make sure that I, I, I had opposites. Chemistry does not come from out of nowhere. You have to find out where the chemistry is. And what you want to do is that you want to create this opposite thing. Now, he was very stoic, very stoic guy. You, you've seen him. You know that. Yep. Uh, yep. And, and, a, and a bit dangerous and a bit dangerous. Uh, and I wanted to create somebody who was completely opposite that. My guy couldn't stop talking. My guy was, I guess most people say, is entertaining. My right. guy was funny. My guy was all the things that he was not. Right. Uh, and he, what, what was so great about that, he didn't make a fuss about it. He just went with it. I, right. One time we were doing something and I threw something that was about a sandwich or something or another, and he was eating. And this, uh, this fast, he stopped eating. And I, and I said to him, I said, uh, are you going to eat that? And he, and he looked at me and he, he said, uh, no, no. And I grabbed it and started eating it. And <laughs> after they said cut, he said, stop talking. And I said, Sean Claude, you don't understand. I have to talk. You don't. You right. don't talk. Right. I talk. So don't worry. It's going to be good. And that, you know, I think that made the film really 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 interesting i don't know you saw you i don't know if you agree or not but yeah you know the way to go not saying you know so anyway that's it you know harrison the, the character that you developed of joshua and uh and and it's funny because yeah. i'm going to ask cause sheldon i mentioned you know a, a uh you know they they never did a lion heart 2 or possible sequel you know i i feel like right. they could have done a, a a prequel and it could have been all about you mm -hmm. and who Joshua's character was, right? Because you kept saying throughout the film, you know, you remember how they did you mm -hmm. and, you know, you were a fighter. And I felt like that was kind of, right? That was a, a, an untouched uh, part of the, uh, you know, of your character. Yeah. 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 I, 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 you're absolutely right, man. Um, and that was that was talked about a little bit, too. It, it, um I remember Jean Claude saying, "Yeah, we got to do a sequel," but it, but it never happened. I don't know what the deal was. I don't know why. I know that there was a script written, uh, and they were going to do it over in Europe somewhere, uh, wow. but it, for some reason or another, it didn't happen. I, I don't know. After they they write it and they they sent me a script. After that, I don't know what happened. So, who knows? Right. I mean, I, you know, they should have done it. I'm, I'm they really should have done it. It would have been. I think would have been fascinating and it would have been a big hit. I think. Yeah. Absolutely. Did you um Harrison, did you work out yeah. at all with uh with Jean Claude during the film? You know, was there any push for you to do any action uh fight? You know, what uh how did that go about with the movie? Well, I I I was doing actually before I even went in to read, I was working out. I was working out at a gym that was close to my house at that particular time called Record Ball World at that time. Uh, and I, I went every day. So I, I was already, uh, you know, buffed, as they say. Uh, and uh, I, I did the action that we did on it. On we had a street thing that where we were coming and we we're going someplace, trying to find a, try to find a bus stop or something, trying to find something. I don't remember what it was. Uh, and we then run into these two guys, these two thugs who uh, uh, you know, want to rob us or something. Uh, and we got into a fight and he did his martial arts stuff. 
But I had already decided that because we did a we did an eye thing where I got this this puffed up eye, and and I and, and a cauliflower ear. So if I got a puffed up eye and a cauliflower mm -hmm. ear, right. then that must indicate that I'm boxed or something. Right. So I use that in that scene where it looks like I'm boxing, and uh, I am boxing. And I'm throwing right. jabs or something, you know, hitting the guy because I'm saying, you know, you're trying to run, I'm gonna kick your butt. And he started calling me names, and I beat the crap out of him. But but that's in the movie. Me didn't do it. The character did. Uh, and uh, I, I was glad about that because it also showed the difference between those two people because Jean-Claude's character was doing his, his martial arts stuff on one guy and I was boxing another guy. So there you go. There you go. That's how it worked. <laughs> now, now it seemed like you had great rapport with the other the other antagonists, right? The the, the lady and, mm -hmm. and, and uh, Brian. You know, what was it like working to mm -hmm. them? Had you worked with with them before, or this was the first time on a film you, you worked with them? It was the first time for me. Uh, I, I met Deborah Bernard, who was wonderful in this movie, playing that, that you know, elitist type female. Uh, and I had a couple of things to do with her, but I was messing with her a lot uh, and, and, and uh, playing that she, she would, didn't have anything to do with me except to, to get out of the way and do what I tell you to do. Uh, uh, but we had a great rapport. I thought, I thought we, we, and I knew her from actually we, we were in, we were taught by the same person. Uh, and I, we, I got along great with all of them, man. Uh, uh, the guys that were the other fighters, except for the one that played Attila. I never met him, never talked with him or anything, but the other oh. people, you know, the guys that were chasing him. I we yeah I talked with them a lot man they, they were cool guys and they were real good friends of, of Jean Claude's so right yeah I had some reaction with them but not a whole lot because I was trying to you know, focus on what I was doing right 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 now you know obviously Lionheart goes down mm -hmm. and as a mm -hmm. as a huge you know iconic martial arts film there's no doubt about it it absolutely does you know. Did you guys yeah. know after you wrapped right. that it was like, wow, this, this this movie's an instantaneous hit? Or you're like, ah, you know, we're not sure. You know, what, what was your gut feeling after you had finished production? Well, you know, let's face reality here. Um, to to think a film is going to be a hit because it's good is a waste of energy. You you, you don't know. You for, you don't first of all, you don't know what the viewer is is going to do. You don't know if they, they're going to catch on to something or not. Uh, and you don't know if the, if the production itself is going to show up good. Because now you, we finish and that's supposed to be, you know, some editor to change complete movies into something else. And it was better. So I, I personally, I, I don't think I talked to anybody that thought it was going to be a hit. Uh, I talked to people who said, well, we don't know what's going to happen because you never know. And we did right. real well in Europe. I don't know how we did here, but I think we did very well in Europe. Now, did you find after acting in this role, did you get offered any any other type of um, action or, or martial arts uh, uh, specific roles because you had done this this martial arts movie? Well, no, but I got a lot of offers. Uh, uh, but they weren't martial art, uh, uh, martial arts roles. They were parts I got offered. Well, Quantum Leap was one of those things. Um, I, Columbo. Oh, man. Oh, my God. My goodness. My goodness. My goodness. Peter Falk. I don't know if you know of him. Maybe uh, yeah. you do. Absolutely. Okay. He's a legend. Peter Falk called me. He, Peter, Peter Falk called me. Him and him, one of his assistants called me and offered me, I don't know why it said choked me up. Anyway, and offered me, because I was crazy about Peter Falk, uh, and offered me a, a really great part on a, a movie alum, uh, playing his part. And when I went to work, uh, the first day I was at work, uh, and I was, I believe I was staying downtown because it was shooting downtown on location. 
I, I should have set, uh, they drove me to the set where it, it was this, it was, this, it was this fast food place and there was a lot next to it. And, and I got out of the car and, and, uh, and Peter Falk was, was talking to the director and uh, some other people were around. And finally I, I got out and I was walking towards him and he looked around and he, and he looked and he said, oh, you know, ah, uh, yeah, there he is, there he is. Uh, hey, Harrison, come on away. So, so I said, I said, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he started the shadow box. <laughs> and, and, I, and I said, Pete, what are you doing? <laughs> he, said, he said, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? I'm doing you. I'm doing you. What are you talking about? I said, oh, you're doing me. Oh, you, oh, 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 you're doing me. You're doing me in the film. He said, yeah. I said, how many times did you see that movie? He said, I don't know, about five or ten times. <laughs> I, wow. I said, wait a minute. We got, we, you, you know, you know what I'm saying? We, we got validated by, by Peter Falk. That's awesome. Uh, and I said, oh, this movie's going to do, do okay. But he was, he was one of my special people in the world because I thought he was one of the most incredible actors I'd ever seen. Uh, he never looked like he was acting. He always looked like the thug. He, he, the, the thug that turned into a detective, you know. Right. And, uh, that was fun. It was fun meeting him, man. It was, I, I, did, I, I, I drove him crazy because his first film, was a thing called Murder Incorporated. And they just, with a hat, overcoat on him, you know, and it was walking on the you know, that one eye, you know, he was doing this. And, and my Brit was in it. I don't know if you know who those people are, but later you can look it up. Yeah. Uh, and a very beautiful woman from Germany. And he's, he's, he's uh, you know, he's uh, bullying her around, the, you know, bullying her around the apartment and stuff. And I'm sitting in the movie house and I'm looking at this guy and I'm in, East Point, Georgia. I mean, in the deep south, where you know, we we don't we didn't even get a chance. I didn't at that particular time. No, none of us African American people did. We couldn't sit in the main auditorium at, in those wow. days. Main auditorium. Wow. For, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we had sitting in the, in the in the in the balcony. And I saw Murder Incorporated in that balcony. And usually, if I'm a, that movie I was watch a film uh and it's it gets real hot i'll go downstairs and there's a little alcove down there where the air blowing in from the main room is blowing and you get cool and you go back up well when murder corporate was playing and i didn't know what that film was going to be at all when it was mm-hmm. playing i did downstairs to get cool i my eyes never left Peter Falk. That's how <laughs> I was influenced. That's how inspired I was by this guy. I mean, unbelievable. Wow. In the meeting, I mean, come on, you know. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. I got to tell. Yeah. I got to say, your 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 Peter Falk uh, uh, impression was pretty good. Yeah, it's close. It's close. <laughs> he Absolutely. stopped me doing that one day. He, he saw me doing that, and he saw me doing. That. He, he did the same thing I did to him. He said, "What are you doing?" I said, "What are you doing? What are you doing?" I said, "I'm, I'm doing you." Said the same thing. I said, "I'm doing you." Wow! Yeah, quite a guy. Quite That's a guy. amazing. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Harrison, yeah. You, you mentioned after Lionheart, Quantum Leap. You're talking about you know, the legend right now, Peter Falk. So I have to ask you, if yeah. you could say, if, if you can pick uh, uh, over your amazing career, the turning point mm-hmm. of your career, one specific project, mm-hmm. can you name that? What was the mm-hmm. one film that you said, man, this, this just sent me off to space. This, this was the one that put me out there. I think we already said it. I think it was Lionheart, man. Uh, Definitely Lionheart. I don't know any. Yeah, I don't think I don't know anybody that didn't like it. I had actors calling me, actors, you know, other actors calling me up saying, "Oh man, saw that. Oh man, I saw that." Because the character goes from being 
one thing, he has a complete arc to being this actually terrific human being at the very end, where I break down, I cry, where I, we, yep. he and I love each other at the end. I mean, uh, you know, uh, I think I think it was that one. Um, yeah, yeah, it's that one. I mean, the nomination for the Emmy helped, you know, later, but right. that one, and I mean, I've done a few things over the years, and uh, they, they have been big hits, but you know, I've worked, I've kept busy. Yeah. Right, right. But but in your opinion, Lionheart is, is the cream. That's the one. That's the one. That's the one. That's the one. Yeah, we went. You know that thing. I mean, they asked us to come to Germany, Shelton and I. Did he tell you that? Uh, we went to Germany because they were doing a Blu-ray Blu wow. uh, type thing. Uh, and, uh, and we were invited to go to Germany to help promote that. And wow. That was cool too, man. And then we got a chance to go with the audience to see the film. Yeah. Wow. And I was surprised because I sat there watching that film and found myself getting choked up still after all those years. I, wow. I still got choked up. 1989. So, yeah, 89. Wow. That's almost 40 years ago. Unbelievable. And you say I still look the same. That's ridiculous. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think you look great. That's just me. <laughs> so, Harrison, what do you what do you got on the plate now, Harrison? Are are you enjoying retirement? Are you you know still actively doing some theater or anything, or or, or are you just enjoying time? I'm no, I still act. Uh, I, I got a film that I've done recently called Magazine Dreams. Uh, oh, wow. And it's, it's, it stars, I don't know if you know, uh, Jonathan Majors, he was in a film called um, The Heart of the Fall. It was a Western. Uh, and, uh, and it, I think it's pretty damn good. Uh, when it comes out, I mean, I, I think it's that Suns or something, but uh, I think I uh, I mentioned that I like. And um, do you have do you have uh, do you have any other projects in the pipe coming down besides that? Well, there's a thing called um, it's a, it's a I don't know what they're going to do with it. It's called um, Cooters C O O T E R S that I did for Cooters, some okay. people in Santa Fe, uh, New Mexico. Yeah, that's good. That's it ain't out yet. So I don't know what what's going to happen with it because I'm I'm on this end. I'm not in the production end, so I don't know what's going to happen one way or the other. But yeah, I guess that's that's going on. And there's a lot of stuff there uh, that's that's happening. And I'm a writer too, so you know. So we'll see. You always say okay. we'll see when you're in the movie business because you don't know. <laughs> you don't know. Right. We'll see. <laughs> Oh man, um, Harrison. So, what do you think has been the key to your success for having been successful after during this whole decade, all these decades? You know, you, you mentioned when you first started mm -hmm. to you know, obviously the the you know your big jump off of being Lionheart in '89, and we're 2022, and you just told us about a, mm -hmm. a short film and another film. So, what do you think has been the key to your success mm -hmm. of longevity during all those decades? Oh man, I don't know. I think drive, drive is one thing. Um, uh, you know, I, I think that's it. I hear people saying things like luck. I don't know, even know if I believe in luck. Uh, luck is chance. Uh, I think it's just hard work. I think the drive, the, the continue doing it, ne never, ever, ever giving up. That's the key to anybody's success, never giving up. You fail a whole lot more than you win. Right. Uh, and I, I've had that, you know. I mean, a lot of things that went wrong. Uh, and then a couple things went right. So uh, the whole thing is never quit. Just, you know, you can't. You can't quit because right. you, when you quit, you're saying, I give up. That's right. yielding to something that you actually could get control if you wanted to. So, no, that's I think that's the key. Well, 
And and I'm going to say I think one of your biggest keys yeah. is obviously your youthful appearance because I think we could put the hat back on you and you could jump right back into the movie as <laughs> Joshua right now. <laughs> Well, yeah, I could. I could. I could jump back into him. It's, it'd be easy enough for me. I, he's with me all the time. You know, I can. I can. You know, stutter. You know what I'm saying? I can do that easy because my father was like that. My father. <laughs> part of. I think I said this already. I may have. I don't know. Part of that character, I'd say half or even three quarters of that character, was my dad. Uh, he. Like that, mm. uh, um, I had not met him thirty something years old, and his mother, my grandmother, passed away. I went to this town of East Point, Georgia, uh, to be with my father, uh, and the, and and we go through this thing together, and we sat down over. Uh, a bottle of, I don't know what it was, scotch or whatever. I think you flipped over there, Harrison, with your phone. Well, I think I think Harrison, if we saw it, his uh, voice kind of coming in and out, so he might it, it, he might have froze over there. We'll give him a few seconds to uh, to come back in. Um, but everybody, if you're coming in now to tune in to the martial arts experience, uh, we've been spending the last 47 minutes with, you know, a, a legendary icon in the acting business, Harrison Page. Uh, for those of you just tuning in, he talked about his wonderful experience with uh, when he first started. Obviously, he had, he had started in school plays and then had moved on. Uh, but he talked about, you know, working with the Sledgehammer show, um, that iconic show that was on, you know, major networks. Um, and uh, he, he gave a testament to his career of Lionheart, you know, for martial artists that obviously follow, you know, if you if follow martial arts movies, I mean, Lionheart is a top, it's one of the top films, you know, um, everybody remembers that film. Um, you know, again, if you came up in, in, in the martial arts at that time, film came out in 1989, directed by Sheldon Lettich, and it, it was a great film, you know, it was a good premise. Uh, Van Damme got to show, you know, some of his fighting ability with fighting different um, different villains, you know, or fighters throughout the movie. And I thought that that was, you know, pretty iconic. I think he had the, you know, he, he had the one fighter that he fought in the pool. And then there was a the guy in the racquetball court. Um, and, uh, you know, just just all the actors, I think, were great. You know, the two villains, um, you know, they played a great job. Um, as uh, Harrison said, you know, he, he enjoyed working with them. And um, it was interesting to hear that, you know, uh, Harrison, you know, the way he described Jean-Claude Van Damme, you know, he obviously described Jean-Claude as a very stoic and, you know, powerful actor. And obviously we've had, you know, some different people on our show before. But, you know, uh, he was a great, you know, Harrison was a great um, supporting actor in that, you know, a great number two for him. And and you saw as the film's, you know, arc went back and forth, um, you know, at, at first, you know, the what was going on between the two of them. And then, you know, as obviously the show continued, um, you know, Joshua's character arc started changing, you know, and, uh, you know, for those of you that watched the movie, you know, Joshua made the decision to bet against him in that final fight uh, against Attila. And, uh, you know, he tells him to, you know, uh, back down and take a dive in the fight, you know, because he's going to get killed. And you see that that arc, that character arc of, um, you know, that character arc of the Joshua character, you know, and. Uh, what he meant and, and and how he went because he was a former fighter, you know? So, um, but even at the end of the movie, I remember watching it and, you know, for myself, you know, even, even, and I was much younger than, you know, I, I got a, a emotional at that time, you know, I was very, very emotional and uh, you know, seeing that fight that iconic against Attila, um, you know, Abdel PC uh, he's uh, actually, we had reached out to him as well. Uh, hopefully he'll be coming on. We obviously had his brother, Muhammad, uh, Muhammad came on the show and, um, you know, we were able to, um, you know, kind of move forward and, you know, um, experience those things. But, you know, his, his, 
his character was just amazing. And uh, Harrison, I'm glad you could join us again. I was I was killing time for you to come back on. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. We were talking about we were talking about the character arc of of, of Joshua and right. you know just everybody falling in love. You know, I I even said I was much younger when that film came out, and yeah. I remember I got emotional. You know, because. Yeah. The way that, you know what I mean? The way that you had, you know, you're like, look, I got you, man. You know, I I bet against you, but we're both okay. And, mm-hmm. you know, I, I remember being younger watching that and I got emotional, you know, and, and, and Jean-Claude, you know, his his very, you know, uh, his acting, I know was not, you know, the craziest, but uh, mm-hmm. that line when he said, you know, wrong bet. And and he went out there and just, oh my God, you know, did his jump kick on Attila and everything. And yeah, you know, you're yeah. in the background, almost like the, you know, the brother, the father, like laughing and you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, you know, yeah, that yeah. moment where you guys came together at yeah. the very end of the movie, man, that, that was powerful. That was very, very powerful. I, I Even me and I was in it. I mean, you said you got choked up. I got every time I see that film, I get choked up and I, that's yeah. me up there. So somehow or another, what, what we did there, in my opinion, I mean, they've done martial arts movies all over the place. But that somehow or another heart of that film sticks out of that relationship between the two of those people who didn't know each other in the very beginning, didn't even speak the same language, uh, took went full circle. And the two of those guys, and that's right, when you said that should have been a sequel, yeah, that should have been. Uh, and you see that those two people. change and become close to each other and you can tell that they're each other is actually to say to Sheldon 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 it's a love story wow he said that oh yeah yeah, yeah, but you know, like, uh, great, great, yes. <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, right. And I was doing it to a guy. Yeah. Piece. Well, it was definitely, you know, it, it, it definitely, like I said, Lionheart was an iconic film. And, uh, you know, you made a lot of memories yeah. for a lot of different people that saw it. You know, it meant a lot. It means a lot to a lot of different people, martial artists and, you know, enthusiasts, practitioners and, you know, guys that are, you know, older now showing their kids that film, you know. And I just think that, uh, you know, you were part of something very special. Yes, it's freezing. And it, isn't it? Well, Harrison, I think uh, you know we've been uh, we've been now almost at the hour mark. Uh, I know we've had a little bit of internet trouble, uh, but I would like to thank you so much for coming out tonight. I really, really appreciate it. Um, you know, hopefully we can have you on the show another time. You know, we could talk a little bit more uh, if you're able to. But uh, you know, on behalf of the Martial Arts Experience, I want to thank you. You know, for coming out and and being part of our show today. Mm-hmm. I think I think you're freezing up a little bit. So, uh, but again, Harrison, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Uh, we wish you the very best and a happy new year uh, for everybody that tuned in today. Okay. I want to thank everybody for tuning in today. Thank you for enjoying the film. And thank, thank you so much. Those guys, those people out there who who have seen it and loved it. Absolutely. All right. On behalf of the martial arts experience, I want to thank everybody that tuned in today to watch this amazing episode. Um, Again, thank you, Mr. Harrison Page, for logging in. Uh, Guys, again, this is our last episode. This is season nine of the 2020-22 year, so 2022. Uh, and, And we have a great slate of our next interviews coming up for next year. So... From my to you guys, happy new year. Be blessed. Much success. And we'll catch you next time on the Martial Arts Experience, guys. Have a great one. Take care.